Hello and welcome to Lexi's Healthy Dynamic Life. I am your host, Lexi, and on today's episode, I have the special privilege of interviewing Jennifer Zaruba, also known as Coco Girl Jen on Instagram. We're friends on Instagram, and she's just so inspiring, has beautiful displays of fruit. Thank you so much for being on this interview today. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm super happy to be here. This is a great opportunity. I love connecting with like-minded individuals and, you know, any chance I get to, you know, hear about another individual's story or share mine is just a great opportunity. So I'm really excited to be here. Um, as, you know, Lexi said, my name is Jennifer Zaruba, also known as Coco Girl Jen on Instagram. Um, I am working on becoming a health coach at the moment for people who are looking to go raw vegan or whole foods plant-based, especially if they have, you know, um, sort of a relationship with food that they'd like to improve. I also, at the moment, am doing Instagram, as you know, she noted, I do lots of these like big fruit platters and you know sometimes I do simpler posts as well but my main focus is focusing on self-love and helping other individuals who are interested in this lifestyle getting to the work where they want to be so yeah <laughs> oh also I am 22 and I have been high raw vegan for five years now or almost five years it'll be five years in like five days actually. So yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Beautiful and auspicious. I love that. And happy raw anniversary. So Thank you. <laughs> people might be wondering, you know, why would they want to go raw vegan? What kind of people are interested in adopting this lifestyle? And what led you to being a fruit lover and a high raw vegan as you described? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's um, great questions. I think, you know, we'll get to the story part. I'll leave that till the end because it is, it is a decently long story and it encompasses probably around 10 years of my life. So it's a long one, but I'll try my best to, you know, speed or not speed through it, but make it efficient. Um, as far as like, why would somebody want to go raw vegan? I mean, for me, you know, it's a little biased, but I almost just think like, why not? Um, it's just, you know, there's such a big difference when you go from eating, you know, kind of the standard American, the standard Western diet that's just full of almost, you know, all meat and dairy, you know, processed carbs, lots of beige foods is kind of like what I want to say. And you transition over to an abundance of fruits and vegetables with so much color, so much life, so much hydration, so many vitamins, minerals. I mean, even just by saying that, I'm sure that, you know, you realize that there's a huge difference there that will affect your energy levels, your overall health, you know. I mean, I'll, yeah, it's just kind of like, why not? I think typically people who are drawn to this lifestyle are those who are already vegan, who are kind of looking to take that next step. Maybe they went vegan for ethical reasons, or, you know, there's somebody who, they, they just, you know, realize that, they don't just want to do something for the animals, but they also would like to improve their overall quality of their diet. Because I get a lot of people who are vegan that they're like, yes, I'm vegan. I'm, I, you know, I love what I'm doing for the animals, but I don't feel great. And, you know, we want to we want to optimize how they feel. Right. So um, I think another demographic I see this typically attracted to raw veganism is people who are unfortunately struggling with a lot of health issues. You know, I've seen, I've heard some amazing stories. Um, I actually, one of my followers was dealing with multiple sclerosis. Yeah. Um, yes. and yeah. And he, he went from being in a wheelchair and almost, you know, being like a vegetable to, seeing an incredible transformation. I don't think he's quite out of the wheelchair, but he's on his way there. And the amount of improvement that he's seen with his symptoms and his diagnosis is just, it's unheard of. And when I heard that story, I was just so taken aback. And, you know, I, you know, there's some of those bigger influencers like Foley Rock Christina as well, who we knew was hypoglycemic, you know, very underweight. I think, you know, I don't remember if she said that she was, you know, unfortunately just not able to keep her food down or something, but um, yeah, just incredible transformations that going through, going to raw foods can do. So that's, that's what I see, but I think it's for anybody. I think it's for anybody who's, you know, looking to eat healthier, who loves fruit and, you know, is, is willing to get through that, 
that difficult transition period because I think there's always a difficult transition period no matter how much you love fruit so yeah and so what does that transition period look like or what could it look like what did it look like for you tell us your story okay well for me it looked a lot different than most people and we'll get into that in just one second after I answer how you said like what what would it normally look like I personally think transitioning to fruit uh, let's say from like a standard Western diet, because that's kind of like the most extreme. I would say, I would say it typically would look like going vegan first. I think that's, that's a big step in the right direction. And once people are able to, you know, kind of clear their diet out of dairy and meat and such, I think the next logical step would probably be going more towards whole foods plant-based, you know, I see a lot of people who are whole foods plant-based um, after, you know, just being you know, your average vegan or, and, you know, all that good stuff. And I think then from whole foods, plant-based, we kind of transition more into just in eating more fruit throughout the day, maybe having a cooked meal at night doing raw till four. And then if they please, you know, going all the way to fully raw. So that's kind of how I see the transition working, you know. Um, as for myself, I actually went raw vegan overnight. And um, there's a there's a long story behind that, like I said. It... It wasn't easy, but I think it's what I needed to do. And I'm grateful every day that I made that switch because when I went raw vegan overnight, I wasn't just going raw vegan overnight. I was going vegan overnight. I, that day changed my life. Honestly, probably one of the best decisions, the best decision I've ever made. Honestly, it's completely changed the outlook, you know, and just my everyday um, existence, honestly. So I guess to get started with that story then, um, it kind of goes all the way back to, to when I was almost like 11, 12. And I was, you know, I was an early bloomer. I was a lot bigger than the other girls, not necessarily overweight, but I just grew so much faster. People thought I was like 17 when I was only 12 years old. And I'm assuming that's probably because of all the growth hormones and a lot of like the chicken and dairy and such. So, but anyways, um, and I was made fun of a lot for that. I was made fun of a lot. Uh, I would like snap my bra straps and, you know, make fun of me for having boobs. And um, I would get a lot of, a lot of, you know, people would call me fat, even though I wasn't really, I didn't even consider myself overweight. I just wasn't, you know, prepubescent and, you know, I wasn't like a, a stick figure. So yeah, and that was difficult for me to deal with. I also just wasn't, I was kind of like the weird girl, I guess. And I didn't really have a lot of friends. I was bullied, like I said, a lot. And honestly, my home life at that time was a, was a little difficult. Um, my parents were going through a divorce and um, my mom was moving into a new place. My dad was renovating the house and all that together just kind of led me to a place where I started emotional eating. And it was every day after school. Oh, and I should also mention that this tied in with when I had to start getting up earlier. So our middle school started like 7, 20 a.m. And that was a big switch for me um, from you know elementary school to middle school. So I wasn't getting enough sleep and I wasn't really eating enough during the day. And that along with all the other craziness going on in my life led to me emotional eating and kind of binging after school every day. So when I was about 12, 13, I found myself in this, this cycle that wasn't at the worst it was. We'll, we'll get to the worst you know, down the road here, but um, it was definitely something that happened every day. I would just come home and kind of stuff my face. And I started seeing the pounds pack on pretty fast. And that kind of behavior was a little off and on for the next few years, but it definitely led to a lot of weight gain. And when I was, even though I was in volleyball, so I wasn't completely inactive. I was always somebody who liked getting outdoors and moving my body, but I just didn't exercise enough to, I guess, you know, make up for the crazy amount of junk food I was eating after school. Um, so when I was about, I, I believe I was 15 and I had hit my highest weight of 163 pounds, which isn't crazy by any means, but for me at 15, that was a lot. And I, I was, I, I did consider myself slightly overweight at that point. It was, you know, I was dealing with chafing and my back hurt because of, you know, just all the extra weight and such. And it was very difficult for me uh, to be that high of a weight at such a young age. So and when I got to that weight, I just had realized, you know, I need to make a change. 
But at 15, do we really know what the right change is? So that's when I found myself, unfortunately, diving into a lot of crash diets, low carb diets, um, specifically low carb was the one I did for a while. And on the bright side, I did get rid of a lot of, you know, like things like cheese puffs, like just the complete junk food. I got rid of chips, which I never really loved chips, but those were out a lot of like the processed food. Um, and I did actually lose a decent amount of weight. Um, I don't believe I was, because those crash diets never last very long, right? I don't believe over time at that point, I was severely restricting like long-term. There were like short periods of time where I was doing, but it wasn't so bad to the point where I was extremely deprived. So when I was losing weight, it's not like I lost weight super quick or anything. Um, I want to say I lost 20 pounds. And by the time I was about 16, then I was feeling really good actually. I was I was feeling good even though I wasn't vegan or anything at that point. I was feeling pretty good. I had started running and I'd started doing a little bit of body weight exercise. So I was feeling pretty good in my body. I was about 140 pounds and yeah, I was doing well. And then I had my first breakup. <laughs> I had my first breakup and it was really difficult for me even though it was just high school and looking back, I'm like, why do I even care? But at the time it was a lot for me. So and I found myself emotional eating again because I was dumped on Halloween. So I was dumped on Halloween. We were gonna, the two of us were gonna go out and have a good time. We had costumes and everything. And then I was left at home with the bowl of candy to, to help out the trick-or-treaters. And that's just kind of a recipe for disaster, you know? So I ended up eating like the whole bowl of candy and feeling really sick. And uh, that just triggered me so hardcore, but instead of, going right back into binging, I actually, I saw what had happened that day and I went all the way on the other extreme and I started restricting my calories hardcore. And um, that kind of ended up leading me to my rock bottom. So for about a year, I was eating maybe 12, oh no, like 1400 to 1700 calories a day, exercising like crazy and um, I still wasn't really getting enough sleep because our high school also started very early and the kind of student that was like, I'm not going to get a B. I'm going to get an A. So I was <laughs> very low on sleep, still didn't really have any friends, severely restricting my calories, cutting people out of my life because I was stuck in this mindset. My parents were trying to get me help because they saw I was getting too thin. I got to my lowest weight at that point, about 120 pounds, which sounds pretty normal. But for me, I, um, I'm definitely like a curvier person. So that was very low weight for me. And you could kind of see my bones and stuff. It, um, it, you could tell that I was, I was too underweight. So that, yeah, like I said, that continued on for about a year. And then when I was 17 in my junior year of high school, I, I found myself in a, in a really strong depression, unfortunately. Um, and I was kind of crippled by anxiety. I was having, you know, panic attacks almost every day going to school because I was really struggling to keep my calories that low with all of the schoolwork I was doing because junior year was just so intense. My high school was, my high school was more difficult than my college. It was, and a lot of people can attest to that. Those of you, those of uh, you that like, you know, went to a difficult high school, you know, it's like, so, um, but yeah, I, I found myself in a deep depression, lots of anxiety and I just couldn't do it anymore. My body was just like, I cannot take this restriction anymore. And I ended up eating in the middle of the night. I was waking up at like 3 a.m. in the morning and my body was bringing me to the pantry, bringing me to the fridge and forcing me to eat tons of food. I would wake up sometimes with like cereal on me. <laughs> and I was like, what? And I would think it was like a dream. I was eating in my sleep because I was that hungry, crazy. And so eventually that turned into another terrible cycle, which was, you know, binge, not eating anything in the day during the school day in order to try and make up for it. Getting home, being so hungry, binging after school again. And that started going on. And I started gaining weight, of course, which although I really needed to, I didn't want to back then. And Eventually people, I saw a couple of my, not friends, but like people I was acquainted with, they noticed that I was kind of gaining weight 
which super triggered me. And that threw me into probably the darkest time of my life when I was dealing with that whole cycle. But instead of just binging and then going on with my night, I was binging and then throwing up and then trying to go on with my night. Um, and that was, that was very difficult for me. It kind of still brings up some emotion to this day because it was just, I was so lonely. I was so depressed and I didn't have any hope left because I had already tried, you know, everything that I thought I should do to lose weight. I, I was restricting my calories. And I just kept telling myself, I'm not disciplined enough. You know, I'm just not being disciplined enough or um, I just need to eat, you know, more spaced out or something, or I need to do intermittent fasting. Like I was trying to find ways to eat a very small amount um, you know, and, and not continue to gain weight, but it was just not working because my body needed that food, you know? Um, but eventually I just, I got to this point where I remember it was the day before I went vegan or a couple days before I went vegan. And I was just sitting in my room on a Sunday night and I was like, I don't, I just started crying like crazy because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't continue my life like this. You know, my glands were all swollen from the throwing up. My throat hurt like crazy. I, I had so much bloating because my body just didn't want to digest food anymore. It wasn't sure if I was going to try and throw something up. Um, even when I would like lean over, I would like throw up a little bit because it was so bad. And um, thankfully, I, I was just on YouTube and I found Freely the Banana Girl, which, you know, many people, many people find her, but I don't think a lot of people, you know, unless you've been in that situation where she was part of your journey, know how impactful she was on, you know, to people and for the vegan movement. Because for me, I, I just started watching all her videos. I was like, no way. There's this person who's eating like 3000 calories a day of fruit and she looks like that. And she's been doing this for years. And she doesn't exercise like crazy. Like I know she's a pretty avid biker or Mina you know, was a pretty avid biker, but she wasn't doing like the amount of exercise that I was doing, which is just insane. Um, and I was like, no way. And I started looking into her videos more and she was like, you don't have to restrict your calories. You just have to think about what you're eating versus like how much you're eating. And I was like, I need to do this. Like, I can't live like this anymore. This is my sign. And uh, like I said, a day or so later, I just made the switch overnight. I was like, mom, I'm going vegan. We went to the store or raw vegan. I just had to go raw vegan because I was, I guess I was still attracted to it for the reason that it was still lower in calories. And because I thought, okay, I can eat as much as I want. You know, I can eat so much food and I can actually feel full for once, you know, instead of just um, eating and eating and eating. So we got a bunch of food, went raw vegan overnight. And things definitely improved after that. That's when things started going up again. They didn't improve immediately, but I, I saw a huge in energy. I saw my anxiety go down. I saw my overall mental health just being so much better. And I was really enjoying my food. It wasn't like this whole guilt trip thing. Like I felt good nourishing myself. And the night I went vegan, I also binge watched like all the vegan documentaries on YouTube. And that's when something just clicked to me. I was like, this is not just about my health and about me getting better. This is about the planet. This is about other individuals. And, you know, most of all, this is about the animals because I had always been an animal lover, but I just had never made that connection until that point. And that was so huge for me. And I think the reason that I educated my, or the, the fact that I educated myself was the reason that, you know, I didn't just treat it like another diet. This was a lifestyle. This was about so much more than me. Even if I was at a place where I was like maybe craving cheese and I, I didn't mention this, but I grew up in Wisconsin. So <laughs> it was like the, the dairy capital of America. So cheese is everywhere, like gas stations. There's just cheese everywhere. So yeah, um, there's definitely, that was one of the crazy cravings I did deal with, but it, I overcame it pretty quickly once I had educated myself, like I said, but it's like, even if I have these cravings, I'm not going to fall off because this is about more than me. So yeah, um, I definitely recommend people educate themselves when they come to this lifestyle. And yeah, I, um, I kind of was on this, I was in this weird place for a couple years after that, because I was still in school. I was still pretty stressed. Um, I was still getting up crazy early because at the time I was also very obsessed with makeup. I don't really wear makeup anymore. Um, 
I, I just, I think our natural beauty is, is so beautiful. And I, I don't like all of the, the face paint, I guess, you know, and nothing against people who wear makeup, of course, but it's just, it's not for me anymore. And, you know, like I said, in high school, I was so obsessed with it. I used to paint my face every day. It took like two hours and destroyed my sleep schedule. So when you just have that like past relationship with it, it's hard to want to wear makeup again, but yeah. Um, and I was, unfortunately, I, I was still struggling to accept that I had to eat more. So I was maybe eating like 2000, 2500 calories a day of raw food, but my body needed more than that to make up for the lost calories. Um, it was still in a, in a place where it didn't trust me. So I was kind of, I was kind of in this place where I was, you know, eating raw four or five days a week, and then I would fall off and have like a binge, but it would be like vegan junk food, but not like, uh, I wouldn't say it was like the worst vegan junk food, because typically when I went shopping, I just wouldn't buy any of that, but it was like, it wasn't raw, <laughs> I'll tell you that, and that, that went on for a while. There were periods of time where, you know, the binging got less, and then when stress was increased, the binging was more. And that kind of went on for two years. And um, eventually I, I gained back a decent amount of weight. I got back up to that 140 pounds and I was feeling better again. And then I kind of developed, I kind of relapsed, but in a different way. And, you know, a lot of people, when they think bulimia, they think, okay, it's just, it's throwing up. But in reality, I think the definition is actually making up for you know, eating or purging calories in a certain way. So then I had kind of relapsed with my bulimia, but this time it was in the form of exercise. So I went back into this crazy exercise phase and that happened, you know, I, I don't really know why. I guess I was just like, I wanted to share the vegan message with people, but I, was, I wasn't confident in my body. So I thought to myself, I need to get more fit. I need to get more like attractive in order to fit this profile that I want to show, you know, that exhibits like the vegan lifestyle and everything. So I started actually like crazy. I was getting 20,000 to 30,000 steps a day, running five miles a day, and then doing an hour and a half of body weight exercises. Like it was insane. And I ended up losing a lot of weight again. And I got back down to about 124 pounds, so not quite my lowest, but pretty low. And and then I went through another breakup. <laughs> so yeah, which and this one was a lot harder because this was like my first love, my first like long-term relationship. And um, I was going through a lot at my during my life at that time again. It always tends to happen like that, doesn't it? You know, um, like I said, this is a long story. So thank you for everyone who's listening in and, you know, of course, for our beautiful host here. But um, yeah, I, I just, I went through another breakup and I was at a point where I had gone through a year of college in, at a town very close to me. And I just, I wasn't feeling it. It wasn't for me. It didn't feel in flow. And I didn't see myself wanting to go and work full time. But what I did want to do is travel. So I was at this low weight, had just gone through a breakup, and I booked a one-way ticket to Hawaii because I had always wanted to go there. I absolutely love the energy out in Hawaii. I wanted to meet other raw vegans because living in Wisconsin, I maybe only met like a handful of vegans in person because I just, it was just so rare. There's a lot in the Twin Cities if you go over into Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Minnesota, which I was close to, but I just didn't really make it over to the city that often, so... Uh, yes, and I I went to Hawaii. I spent six weeks out there on a solo trip, and I thought that, you know, doing that, running away from my problems was going to make things better, but it didn't, and although I had so much fun out, you know, I was on a fruit farm using a machete to, like, clear out banana patches, and I was doing, I was just having such a great time, one of the best times in my life. Um, I, I eventually had to go home, so after I got home, I was still at this low weight. I was dealing with very intense cravings. Once again, I wasn't waking up in the middle of the night. I wasn't to that point, but I was, I couldn't stop thinking about food. And it just reminded me so much of when I was in this place where I was binging uncontrollably and all the emotion came back, you know, from the breakup. And I realized I have to deal with these, you know, emotions. And I, 
I can't keep exercising like this and I'm so hungry. And at that point I had also lost my period. So, and I knew that that wasn't a good sign. I, I lost my period. I was always feeling cold, always thinking about food, food, all of the telltale signs of you're not eating enough, you know, or your, horm or your hormones aren't balanced. Um, that's another big part of that. And uh, that's when I dedicated myself to a true recovery. Uh, that's when I was like, okay, I need to just eat as much as I want every day until I get my period back. And not until, <laughs> like basically indefinitely and just let my appetite come down regularly. So that was about, it was almost two years ago at this point when that happened. It was almost two years ago when I dedicated myself to recovery. And I'm so happy I did it. It was so rough the first few months. And I, I, that was the only time where I don't think I could say I was eating high raw because when you're going through eating disorder recovery, the goal isn't to eat, you know, super clean. The goal is to gain weight back and restore your hormones. So I wasn't eating like really crappy food or anything, but I was eating a lot more cooked food. I was eating every once in a while, I would have like vegan ice cream, but it wasn't very often. And I did, I gained, I gained the weight back very quickly. I believe it was about 30 pounds in like three months. So a lot of weight and that was very difficult for me, but thankfully I was working on self-love. I was working on emotional healing and energy healing. So many, you know, that was, it was an extreme period of growth for me. And yeah, then I ended up moving to North Carolina, getting my own place, um, getting a part-time job that paid really well. I met my boyfriend who was also a vegan and we actually had just both moved to the area at the same time. And we met in a vegan Facebook group. We hit it off pretty quickly, um, fell in love. And now we live in our own place together. Now we have a place together. Things are going really well. And over time, throughout that eating disorder experience, I, you know, my appetite slowly decreased. My relationship with my body got so much better. I stopped having these intense cravings all the time because I was eating enough. I was getting enough nutrition. And I stopped being afraid of food too, which is such an important thing. But yeah, now I'm at a place now where I, I don't think about, I, I consider it conscious intuitive eating. Because I think when I, you say intuitive eating, people think you're just eating whatever you want, even if, you know, whether it's like vegan or, or not healthy or whatever, but I consider what I do like conscious intuitive eating. So I'm very conscious of the fact that I'm eating what I believe to be the best foods for my body, you know, raw fruits and vegetables, some cooked food every now and then, and yeah, all that, all that good stuff. But I'm eating intuitively in the fact that I don't I don't measure what I eat. I don't count my calories. I never say, okay, I've eaten too much. I can't eat any more today. Um, and there's no time restrictions either. So that's kind of where I'm at today. Um, very long story, but it's, um, that's honestly kind of just embodies everything that I've gone through and um, it's made me who I am today. So yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it's actually really remarkable and auspicious, the parallels between what you've experienced and what I've gone through myself. I also grew up in Wisconsin. I've oh, no way. been on both ends of the spectrum of eating disorder and mm -hmm. came to raw veganism, fruitarianism somehow and, you know, experienced, okay, what does it take to process emotions and you know, come to understand why and how we eat to fuel our bodies and, and then be set free from those negative feedback loops that can be mm -hmm. so painful and draining. And, you know, for the longest time, I could never figure out why it was so hard. Like, I, I don't know, I didn't know other people were going through what I was going through that other people, you know, were eating too much and wanted to exercise or, or throw it up or, you know, trying to restrict our, like it, it's so crazy that that is so prevalent mm -hmm. that you, you've labeled it and it's, it's become a disease in, in the mm -hmm. book and like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Like, why is this happening? And 
And, you know, as I've come to research more and more and talk to people like you and through our experience, it's like, we're starving for nutrition. Like mm -hmm. I, I could eat my whole refrigerator and still feel ravenous. Like mm -hmm. I could keep eating and I'd feel sick, but I could keep eating. And it's just such a different sensation in the body mm -hmm. now to be able to eat 14 bananas at once and then be full. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's not that like food coma feeling where I just need to pass out and sleep it off. It's like, now I can go for a run or I can play outside or dance or do whatever I wanna do. So my next question for you is like, aside overcoming all of this, you know, tremendous eating disorder and, and improving your self-love and, and having a loving relationship and finding meaningful work, like what else has eating a fruit-based, a, a raw vegan diet brought for you? I think it has brought me the ability to not just have energy for myself, but have energy for, for other people. Um, which I think is a big thing. I'm not saying that people who, you know, eat a standard American diet don't have energy for other people, but I think it's often a trade-off, you know, it's between do I give all my energy to these other people or my dependents, or do I take care of myself? And I think by eating a raw food diet, I just, I have energy for both, you know, I'm becoming a coach. So my job is going to be, you know, serving others. And I, you know, I, feel like I'm going to have plenty of energy still, hopefully, to take care of myself. Um, oh gosh, I mean, there's so many benefits. It's allowed me to spread the vegan message. And I think that's so important, especially in this day and age with, you know, where the planet is at at this point. It's just, oh, it's just ridiculous, you know? It, it's so crazy. And I believe, I don't know what source said it, but some source one of the big media outlets here in the U.S. stated if people started consuming less meat or if people went vegan, I can't remember exactly what the, head, the headline was, but, you know, we could, we could ex extremely slow down climate change. And the people don't want to hear that, you know? Um, so, yeah, it's allowed me to spread the vegan message. It's allowed me to create art as well. As you've seen on my Instagram, I... I just, I don't know, this one day I was like cutting up some mangoes and I was like, I need to share this. I need to make this into something beautiful. So I just started putting things on a cutting board and arranging them in a certain way and then taking photos with my cell phone and editing them and putting them up. And eventually it just became a huge passion of mine. And I really hope at some point I can get to a place where the quality of it is so good that I'm able to kind of sell my art because I do feel like that's a very unique niche, you know, um, fruit platters. That would be cool. I would really love to be able to do that, especially because I just feel like I spend, sometimes I spend like three hours making a single fruit platter. So I was like, you know, it'd be nice to like, you know, get some, get some money from this. But, but even if I don't, it's a, it's a passion of mine, like I said, you know. <sighs> I'm trying to think what else, I guess. It's allowing me to like live my dream life. You know, it embodies everything I'm passionate about and it's made me the person who I am today. Yeah, I think, I think that's pretty much it. Maybe I'll think of something later. <laughs> yeah, that's so amazing. And I'm so happy with you that you can be living your dream life and, and sharing your passions and feeling all that love. I'm just thinking back to the many years that I was eating animal foods and their byproducts and would hear about veganism and would hear about people doing that. And, you know, the thoughts that would come up for me would be like, oh, I could never give up tacos or burritos or burgers. And, and I would hear about the animal cruelty and I would watch videos, but it, it was so difficult for me to accept it at that moment because my addiction to certain foods and the pleasure trap that I was stuck in of thinking that's what brought me joy in my life was so 
strong that I just would put my blinders on. I couldn't even take it. I would push people away. So at the same time, in the back of my mind, I felt that guilt and I knew I needed to do something different. I just didn't know how I could. So do you have any advice or recommendations or anything you want to share to someone who might know that veganism could be a step for them, but it's just, it's so much to, to take in. What is something that they could, they could do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I totally understand that. Um, first, I think it's important for everyone to understand that you're not alone. A lot of people, like you said yourself, have experienced this almost addiction or attachment to certain foods, um, equating that to fun in their life and believing that they can't live without it. And I want everyone out there to know that that's not your fault. You know, um, I don't want people to feel guilt about it. That doesn't mean I don't want people to change it, but I don't want people, people to attach all these negative emotions and self-loathing to it because I, I feel like that kind of just perpetuates the cycle. Um, I think it's just about, you know, it's about letting go of the idea that these foods equate to fun because there are so many ways to have fun out there within the food realm and, you know, out there with outside of the food realm, you know, um, I think it's important to be, be gentle with yourself and understand that, you know, you're, you're not alone. And a lot of people have been through this and a lot of people have overcome it. it it's going to seem very overwhelming at first. And that's a, that's the thing I get from so many people who are thinking about going vegan or raw vegan is they're like this such a big switch for me. And, you know, my advice for that is to, if you need to take things one step at a time, you know, of course, I would love if everyone could just go vegan overnight. But I know for some people, that's just going to push them in the other direction. You know what I mean? Um, so if you're able to just kind of take things one step at a time, I think that makes that will make things a lot easier. So maybe first it's cutting out, it's cutting out meat and going pescatarian then maybe it's cutting out the fish and then maybe the dairy and then, you know, getting rid of the eggs and anything else that's animal based. Um, my other advice would be to educate yourself. Cause like I said, I think educating yourself is, is so essential because I think once you educate yourself, it's, it's easy to, instead of, it's easy to be an observer instead of being in your mind and just thinking, Oh, I can't do this. When you're able to educate yourself, you can kind of step outside of all that and see that, you know, this is about so much more than just what's going on in your head. And those emotional ties, you know, will not be there forever. And even the cravings won't be there forever. I think that's the thing I get a lot. People are like, oh, I don't think I could give it up. You know, I go a few days without it and I crave it so bad. That is not going to last forever, especially if you are eating enough. Um, you know, like I said, I had some cravings, but I never crave cheese anymore. The idea of cheese actually like disgusts me at this point, you know, and I don't, I was never one who ever ate any like the fake meats. And if I did, it was a pretty small portion because I don't want things to taste like meat anymore. You know, it, it just, it kind of disgusts me. And even when I was like in a place where I was kind of binging, but I was vegan still, I just, I never considered eating anything that wasn't vegan because it just meant so much more to me. So yeah, be gentle with yourself. Know that other people are in your situation. Take things step-by-step step if you need to and know that cravings will go away as time goes on. So that's probably, those are probably my biggest pieces of advice. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And just that there is hope. Things will and can get better. It just starts with that conscious choice like you were talking about. If someone listening out there is like I'm ready to go raw vegan overnight. It's possible. Jen did it. I did it. A lot of other people did it. And if you want to transition, that's available to you too. It's kind of create your own adventure to live mm -hmm. in your optimal, vibrant, healthy life that is going to benefit you and everyone else, the whole planet and all the animals. So I really appreciate you tying that in. And now for listeners, who are interested in getting in touch with you? How can they reach you? When will you start accepting clients as a health coach? Tell us how we can keep in touch. 
Yeah, of course. So um, I'm very active on my Instagram and I pretty much get back to, uh, you know, as many DMs as I can. It's very, it's very rare that I don't get back to a DM because like I said, I'm pretty active. So if you want to, you can reach out to me at Coco Girl Jen, no underscores or anything fancy in there, just Coco Jen. And um, yeah, you could reach me on there. If you're someone who doesn't have Instagram, I also do have a Facebook page that is just going to be Coco Girl. Um, and you can go ahead and message me on there. And that's totally fine, too. So uh, yeah, and I guess as far as accepting clients, I think for me, since I'm so I'm in the process of creating my first like coaching program. So this is like more of a structured process, you know, I'm hoping to eventually have it transition to group coaching and such. Um, so it's not that I can't take clients right now. It's just that I'm, I haven't been taking clients at the moment because I'm so invested in trying to get this program out um, because I'm very passionate about it. It's like, I, I think I could take clients and it's just kind of been something I've been going back and forth in my head for a while. I'm like, oh, maybe I just should coach a few people while I'm working on my program. But then I'm like, I really want to get this program done. So yeah, feel free to start a message with me. Uh, we can totally talk about options and Hopefully that program will be out soon. I'm going to be working my butt off these next three weeks because Matt, my partner, is going to be home with his family. So I am just going to be on my computer probably most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. We're so super excited to hear about the launch of your new program. And I'm just so excited that more and more raw vegans are being available to help those that are interested in, in making a change and want that accountability support and, and education. And for those of you who have been following me for some time, you might know that I'm launching a new course as well called Weight Loss Decoded, which is all about releasing excess weight with a raw plant-based lifestyle. So if you want to know more, go check out eatyourway.net. And again, you can follow me at Healthy Dynamic Life, send me a DM or leave a comment and I'll be happy to get back to you. So thank you so, so much, John. I really, really appreciate you and your time and all of your little insights and nuggets of good information. Is there anything else you want to share? Any lasting words of wisdom um nothing's coming to mind um but i do want to thank you so much for this opportunity once again this is wonderful um i hope everyone who tuned in enjoyed it and i hope you all have an amazing day absolutely thank you so much for listening and have a happy healthy and dynamic day bye